Yeah, I've got to go, Pauline. We're just about to go. Are we live? We're live. I've got, we're live. I've got to go, Pauline. Yeah, okay. Bye, love. Bye, darling. Bye. Good afternoon and welcome to Stepford once more. Another Sunday upon us. We've got fabulous baking for you today. One that everybody's bothered about. So let's go through to the kitchen and then we'll see who's on. Come on. We'll go through. I've changed a few things around which I'll tell you about later. So, who have we got on that? We have anybody on yet? Nobody there yet, as such? No? Well, today we're going to do pastry. Um, so, let me know when anybody's there. David. Joanne Spence is there. Oh, Joanne's there. I'm lovely. Because I've got to say hello to a few people because they've insisted, which I'm not going to do this every week. It's not like a chat show where I'm going to say hello. I've got to say hello to the lovely Pierre Alexander over in Marbella, the famous hairdresser friend of mine. Lovely Celia from Blackpool. Because I said I'd say hi to Celia because she said she was going to tune in. Lovely Angie Gold because she's tuned in. Um, Sherry Houston because she said I'd say hello. She doesn't say hello to me when she's on the telly, but I thought I'd say hello to her. And of course, got to say hello to my lovely Deanie. Uh, that's Dean McGrath who does the adverts, which we are now going to remind you that I'm live on a Sunday. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, so today's show. We're going to do pastry. Everybody's really bothered about pastry and pies and all the rest of it. And it's the easiest, easiest thing to do if you follow what I'm going to show you to the letter and don't change it. Don't try and hack it up and think, I'll use this instead and I'll use this. Don't. It, it just won't work then. Okay? Uh, we're going to make a fruit pie. So we'll start with making the pastry. Um, There's loads of people online saying hi, I'm not going to okay, tell you with you're the all there, I'm saying hi to you all. So we're going to start making the pastry. Um, I can't rub in by hand. If you've not got a food processor, which you'll see in a little while, I have um, an abundance of them. Um, I've got arthritis in my hands, so I can't do that anymore. So I have everything that I do in machines. So food processor will do it quicker and easier. If you've not got one, I advise invest in one. Don't go as far as I have and invest in three, um, but invest in one, okay? So into your food processor, you've put, I've got to say, preset your oven. The oven is set, the fan is set to 200, um, and you need the oven hot at 200. So preset a good sort of 20 minutes before you're gonna start baking and try and have your kitchen. It's hard when you've got the oven running, but you need the kitchen quite cold, not, you know, don't have the central heating on as well. So into your food processor or your mixing bowl, you're going to put eight ounces of plain flour. You're Hi, going to, Jimmy. You're going to put, which Jimmy have we got? Who used to work with me at work. Oh, right. He's saying hello. hello to me. Hello, Jimmy. Darn, is it Jimmy? Choo! Then you're going to put uh, the eight ounces of plain flour, four ounces of lard, which has been cut into little pieces. I don't do that when I'm not on here, but I'm not allowed to show you how I do it. I usually hold it in my hand and do it with a knife, but it's <laughs> supposedly dangerous. Health and safety, A little pinch of salt, not an awful lot, just a little pinch. And then, because we're making a sweet fruit pie, you're going to need two tablespoons of confectioner's sugar, uh, icing sugar. Yeah, don't use granulated. Um, a lot of recipes for pastry will say if you're making a sweet pastry, use granulated. Granulated tends to stay hard in the pastry, and as you're cooking it, you'll get a much tougher um, consistency. And you want the pastry to be as light and as crisp and as flaky as, as possible. Not flaky pastry. This is this is short crust pastry. This recipe is also the exact same recipe for if you're making a savoury pie, but then you miss out. The sugar just don't put the sugar in everything else is identical okay don't put sugar in if you're going to put beef into the pie the so we're going to have a little bit of noise it doesn't take very long with it to fall for a few seconds you will have that like fine breadcrumbs okay so I need knife because I will end up in a mess thank you Pearl my lovely Pearl again for the lovely vintage pins she makes me and gets me 
Uh, don't, don't do the next bit in the bowl of the food processor if you're going to use and do not use the blade of the food processor. It will toughen uh, the pastry. So, into a nice mixing bowl. A little word on mixing bowls. If you're going to invest in mixing bowls and you not get them, buy glass. Glass is far better because you can see the lights in it, you can see what you're doing. Um, I've got those like pot old fashioned stone ones which I love but I tend to use those to display, I don't put stuff in them. Um, ice cold water, as cold as you possibly can. If your tap doesn't run freezing cold, I know some people with combi bottles it doesn't. Um, stick an ice cube in it so it's really icy cold. And start using a butter knife, not a sharp pointed knife, not your fingers, not one of those stupid cutter things, not a spoon, a knife. A round edge for tonight. And just start to mix. The water, tiny, tiny amount, and you'll feel it start to grab onto the knife. And what you want it to do is to start to come together. But you don't want it to make a ball immediately. If it becomes wet, you've ruined it. You, you need the merest amount of, of water. Don't use, like some recipes say, um, an egg yolk. Don't use that to bring it together. Don't use milk to bring it together. Nothing. Water. The whole point of the water is um, the water evaporates very, very quickly out of the pastry when it's in the oven. Bring it together with your hand don't overwork it and if you've got hot my hands are always very very hot down the man's use just your fingers try not to over touch it okay uh, right that's your pastry we're going to roll out flour your board don't over flour because the more flour you add on there you're actually adding that to this, which stops the sharpness. Am I keeping you awake, David? David, it's yawning away behind me. Um, I was up at 3 a.m. with work, don't forget. Oh, of course. Uh, right, when, you, when you've got your bowl of pastry, because we're going to make a pie, cut it so you've got one large one, one small one. Okay. Right, equipment. I'm going to do you a little tour and a little tutorial. Pie plates, which is what you're going to need to bake the pie. I've got every different one known to man. This is a 1960s metal one, which I like. You can I tell. Use, I use an awful lot. Very old. Never wash it, just wipe it if you've got those, because it takes the patina off, which makes it then stick if you wash it. The other ones I use a lot are glass ones, which I've got in varying sizes. Um, these are good if you've got a gas oven. They don't tend, the good thing is you see you can lift it up when it comes out and you can see whether the base is cut. You can't do that with a solid one. The only thing is with them, they'll take a lot longer to cook through the bottom. But because not everybody's got pie plates and pie dishes, we're going to use oil one. These are brilliant and I use these all the time, especially when I'm making pies like this because I do, I'll have a day where I'll make 12 pies and freeze them. So if you're going to freeze them, you don't want to freeze them in those freeze them in these, which is perfect, you keep it in it, freeze it. You can get these in different sizes from pound stores to, you know, proper expensive shops, like supermarkets and things. Your larger piece of dough, keep it in a nice round, yeah? My favourite rolling pin, Steve and various other people that are obsessed with my rolling pins, this used to be Mummy's and um, it did have two knobs on the end but over the years because she's had this um, I mean my mum will go mad for me saying but my mum is almost uh, she is 78 and she got this when she was 15 at school because you did home economics and you had to have your own stuff when you use rolling your pastry don't turn it over but just keep it moving so that it's not going to stick if you feel it gripping your rolling pin, just a tiny, tiny amount of flour. Go. Now, the more flour you're adding, the tougher you're going to make the pastry. And you want the base, this base piece, 
to be so big off the outside edge of the dish. Put the dish into the middle. Test it. Over your own pin, which is hard to do on the foil because it moves. Now, don't stretch the pastry because pastry will shrink when you actually bake it, it starts to shrink. Nobody asking any questions yet, I am extremely surprised. No, no questions. There's no questions. Well, if there is, we will do it at the end anyway, we're not just, as you go along. Okay, so we're just all watching now. We're nice, like nice little school boys and girls. Let's move that to one side. More than enough flour on there at the moment. want this one to be approximately the size of the top, obviously. I think that like, goes without saying, you know. So, I would say... That's about it. Yeah? So, I should just pop that on there. just need to wash my hands, because I'm absolutely confident. So if you want anything quick to say now, no, nobody saying anything. Oh, I am surprised. I would like to just point out, by the way, when um, we did the uh, the video the other day of the table settings and everything, um, I'm not trying to tell you that is the correct way or the exact way of doing it. That is my way of doing it. These are my interpretations of how I run my own. The whole point of doing these things are because people were so interested on how I kept the house and how I did things. and. Because I'm a Stepford wife and I do this 24 hours a day, and I do mean 24 hours a day, um, they were interested on how I did it. So it's my point of view. So no point sending me messages saying that's the wrong fork. It wasn't the wrong fork if you listen properly. Right, we're going to need the fruit, which I'm going to show you now how to do the fruit. So you're going to come with me because I want to prove a point because the fruit needs to be frozen. If it's a berry, so you're going to come through, you can see everything now. This is. When you were, I was saying the other day about all the whiteware and stuff, this is what we use every day in toast racks and all the stuff for breakfast, um, vintage serving plates, tray cloths, uh, glassware, water jugs, impression glass, stacks of um, cake stands, butter dishes, teapots, scales, everything is in abundance. Plus I keep all the dry stuff in here and because when I'm normally not doing it like this, if I was making pies I would make them in here. So it's less best. I've now had to go through, yeah, this is the one I made earlier, which you'll see in a moment, because obviously we can't do this in real time. So then I've had to have the garage, half the garage made into a machine room, because as I did say, there is, I don't just buy one electric steamer, I'll buy three, I've got three mixers, three steamers, three uh, slow cookers, uh, multiples of electric kettles up there, multiples of coffee makers and toasters and things like that because I like to have massive amounts of them. People think it's insane, but it's not. That's the way I work, bread baskets on. So I can get to everything so easily now. This is the fruit. These were picked in summer um, and I freeze them in one pound bags, um, Ziploc bags. And I just freeze them. I weigh it to a pound, so I know a pound makes a pie of that size. Okay? You're going to need your mixing bowl once more. Don't put it on top of your pastry. Get the fruit in your mixing bowl. When, do you know these bags? You do it and they, you zip it one way, and when you open it, you zip it the same way. Mm. So they put nothing is in that. It's just literally frozen. That's ice that's on them. That is it. They're just frozen blackberries. I'm going to need two tablespoons of flour, slightly heat. Okay? Can that's I just... What, what? What flour? Plain. It's plain flour. The same flour that you use for the, um, the pastry. It's plain flour. Just two tablespoons of that. Two tablespoons and a half of sugar, just granulated table sugar, okay? If you're diabetic, miss the sugar out of the pastry, sweeten it with a little bit of sprinkle sweetener, about one tablespoon, and the fruit will work perfectly with that 
I can't say the brand name of it, um, in the plastic tubs, the sprinkle sweetener that you can use on cereal. So I'll give you questions at the end of it, but Jim Nixon is asking a question in case okay, I forget. Well, Jim. Um, David's a vegetarian, can he, instead of lard, can he use anything else? Um, yeah, you could use, uh, you'd have to use a vegetarian um, fat substitute, you'd have to look in, or, um, I can't say that in a shop name, neither, uh, in, a, in a health food shop, have a look, it, it's got to be a hard fat, preferably then, if, you, if you're vegetarian, a hard butter, a vegetarian butter would work the same, it doesn't give quite as lightness, but it will work the same. One teaspoon of uh, cinnamon, which sounds really potty, that you're putting it in blackberries, but trust me on this, it works, especially when it's coming to winter. And as you can see, you'll work out what tub that is, but those tubs, I, I fill them, um, they're about 25 years old, because where can you get a tub of cinnamon that size now for 69p? I don't think so. <laughs> That's how insane I am, I like the original thing. Just with your hands. Give those a toss. And then flour everything into, don't throw them all over like I've just done. But it does get a little bit difficult when you're trying to work just to the camera and I can't keep turning it round. Okay. So you've got all the fruit in. Have a little bit of egg wash, beaten egg. Um, and a little bit of water, that's all, just one egg beaten in a cup or a jug or a glass, whatever. Pastry brush, brush the edge, bring your lid on. Now press, don't press hard, it's really, really delicate. And if you've got ridiculously long nails like me, it makes it all the more work. Now if this was on one of the glass uh, pie plates, I would cut the edge with a knife, but because it's foil, and I don't want the foil to go into it, just make sure you've really got those edges pressed together because you want a good seal, okay? I use kitchen scissors on this, and you want it just off the edge. Around. Keep your discarded pastry at the moment, I'll show you why. Just re-press. If you've got it a little bit uneven like that, just take it off. Right now crimp your edge, you lift, press, lift, press. Okay, so I'm lifting with two fingers in, press with one. Again, works far better if you've not got stupid big nails like me. But Needs must. This is Stepford. Everything has to be done with glamour. So, take that in. Okay. Right. So, that's basically pie. Now, you want to pretty it up and make it look a little bit camp. So, we'll give it a brush because that will give it a nice glaze. Now, the reason for the frozen fruit is because pastry cooks at a high speed. The frozen fruit, if it's cooked first, it will be like jam in the middle. I never, ever, ever put a hot pie filling into a pie, be it savoury or sweet. Make sure it's stone cold. It must be stone cold if you've cooked beef to go in a beef pie. It must be cold when you put the pastry lid on or the, or the base because the, the, the heat of the fruit or the filling will start to cook the pastry and the inside of it will be soggy and be wet. It won't, you know, it's not nice. So I'll teach you a quick way. Now, if we see, I'll get somebody now that will come on and tell me the etiquette of pie making. But you're not, so, oh, I've just thrown so <laughs> flour all over my kitchen. You're not technically supposed to decorate the top of a fruit pie. A fruit pie should be just like that, in the oven and plain. I like it to look a bit camp. So, your excess pastry. Roll it out. I've had one of those days today where I've made a right mess of everything. I don't usually do things like that. Little cookie cutter. Just cut three out. Okay, that can go in the bins. And then cut one side. And then cut the other side. Do you want to come in on that, Dave? So you see the way 
So you've got your circle, one that side, one that side, and it gives you perfect little leaves. I do this at Christmas when I'm making holly leaves and things like that. I don't have those stupid things. They're trying to sell you now that cost a fortune. They push it out and promise even a lot of old rubbish. You know, it's, it's, it's illusion. Everything in life is illusion. So I'll put the bed. hole in the middle. You must make a hole in the middle. Don't forget to make the hole because if you forget to make the hole the pie will explode because the air inside it starts to rise and it just bursts and then it looks absolutely hideous. Now when this goes in the oven, be it the tin oil trays, the, bed, the tin trays, any tray, put it onto a, a, a baking sheet, okay? Because the baking sheet will get hot and conduct the heat through the bottom. You've all heard about this soggy bottom business that everybody's going on about. Well, that's the point. You need the heat to conduct through, and if it's on the open rack, it doesn't do that. This is my little trick. I used to have the pie crust with the edge of the pie will cook quicker than the rest of it. God, you never only knows why, I've never known. And I've got these things that you clip over called pie crust protectors that are bought in the States. I think they're absolutely useless because they always fall off. So the easiest way to do it is some foil. Take it around the edge of the pie. Don't make it stick to the pie. Just bring it round and turn that in. Okay? Like so. Now that's going to go in the oven now for between 35 and 40 minutes. So we can't do this in real time, obviously. 35 to 40 minutes. After about 25 minutes, take the foil away, take it out of the oven, take the foil away and put it back in, or the edge will be white and the middle will be brown. If you start to see the, the rosettes in the middle, or the leaves, or whatever you have to call them, if you start to see those going brown, just stick another little piece of foil over the top so it cooks evenly. Remove them before you take it from the oven so the whole thing looks one colour. We will pop that in the oven. It doesn't matter if it's a fan watch shell. But as I said, that will go in there now for about 35 to 40 minutes. Um, unfortunately, I can't speed that up. It's, it's an impossibility um, for me to do that for you. But I did make one earlier. So why are we just wiping down? Because the house smells gorgeous because it smells pies. So why are we just wiping down for me to show you that? Is there anybody who wants to ask a question? No, they're all too busy just watching. They're all too busy just watching. There's a few people come up saying I'll see you tonight. Oh right. Oh yeah, I must tell you that. I'm in. Uh, I'm in Leeds tonight at um, the Viaduct Show Bar uh, with the whole show. So if you if you're in Leeds or you're round about that area, um, pop in and see me and have a little body. So I'll get the one that we've we've made earlier, well, which you've already seen because it's in the pantry. And there you go, the finished pie. Um, I think it looks nice. I don't like when, when people brush it with eggs on a, a, a sweet pie, uh, people sprinkle granulated sugar on the top and thinks it gives it a nice glaze. Don't do it because the sugar will cook five times faster than the pie and you end up with a really burnt top. In summer, I would probably just serve the pie as is. We always serve it with cream. And unfortunately, I have to do custard, which I hate, because David likes custard. What is it you actually like, though, darling, when you have pie? Is it both? Custard and cream. Yes, custard and cream. Why, why the hell do I like custard and cream? Because it's a nice combination. I hate custard. It's one of those British things that I can't quite get my head around, that everything is so... I like it either with ice cream or, or thick whipped cream. Um, what makes it look nice, I think, is... Two... little sprinkle as you would with a mince pie and that's it there's a fruit pie if you're going to serve it to the table take it out the foil thing or at least put it on a nice 
you know, fancy gloves. Don't take it, otherwise it looks like you've got one of those out of the box. And again, don't expect it, <coughs> pardon me, to come out looking a perfect circle because then it'll look like it's come from part bakery and, you know, it, the, the mass produced. It's meant to look homemade, meant to look slightly rusty. Again, if you're going to use the pastry recipe, because I won't go through the recipe again, if we use pastry in future, it will be this recipe, okay? And I will just say whether we're going to use it sweet or savoury. If it's savoury, just leave the sugar out, that's it. But the pastry other than that will be exactly the same. So I'll try and see everything's going wrong today and I'm going to end up making a right pig's ear of this. Um, you can tell it's daytime, can't you? Me saying things like pig's ear, it's not the normal thing I'm saying, I can assure you. So I'll cut a piece. I want to try and let me take the crust away. So I can I want you to see the filling. There you go. And the filling, if I move this, now you see why the flour was dropped inside because it's all cut beautifully and soft and the juices have gone thick with the flour and the sugar and it's mm, rather gorgeous. So there you go, that's fruit pies and pastry. That goes with any fruit. Um, if it's a berry, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, um, anything like that, use them from frozen. Don't cook them first or don't have them soft. Um, if you're going to buy them from the supermarket, refreeze them. Or, even better, buy those fabulous bags of them already frozen. They're amazing. Um, the blackberries were just lucky because we got to Daisy Nook in the, you know, the end of summer and we picked bags and bags and bags of the stuff and I freeze them all up. Um, apple pie, I would cook the apple first. Um, if it was raspberry pie, I would add a little bit of apple to it because a raspberry will break down so it's absolutely nothing inside it and the apple will keep it with a little bit of body. Um, other things like rhubarb and stuff obviously has to be cooked first, but this is just for berries to use from frozen, so it would be a bit of blackberries, um, blueberries, raspberries, that sort of thing. So we'll get some coffee, and then you can esk away. So, if you've not joined um, the YouTube station, please do. The link is always on my home page or on the Terry Fox page. Just join it, click the link, and then make sure you click subscribe. And um, then you'll see all the other stuff as well. Because at the moment I am trying to stick them on um, Facebook so you can see them. But there will be uh, videos, especially when it comes up to Christmas and we do the Christmas decorations and things, that won't be on um, Facebook. So, is there any questions or questions? Right, hold on. What do we have from past? Let's see if I can answer any of them. Julie Harris McCormick. Yeah. Uh, she said, uh, cheese and onion pies are always have a soggy bottom, but I've been cooking them on a wire shelf. So yeah. she's going to try it the other way. Like try you... it on a metal tray. Um, try using um, a foil. You see, the foil bases... Um, i found in recent years, because all these, these Pyrex dishes and things, that you can't really buy those anymore, because they're the tin ones you can. But they were all originally made for more old-fashioned ovens, newer ovens, which I absolutely loathe, but they won't let me have a 1950s stove. So, you know, I've got to have a modern cooker. Um, if, if you They were made to go in an older cooker, which gets a, a much hotter oven, and it cooks differently. Try using the foil one, Julie. Um, if it's a cheese and onion pie with the top, the other trick with that is to make it like a quiche, is blind bake the base, which we'll do blind baking one day and I can show you. Blind bake the base, then put your filling in cut and cut your top as a separate piece and then just sit it on the top. Nobody will be any the wiser and if you make a nice camp edge on it, it, it looks fabulous and nobody realises what you've done. That is a really, really good cheat, you know, so... Any other questions? Joanne Spence. Yeah. How do you do a crust for a meat and potato, meat and potato ash? For on, on tater ash? Well, I would make that pastry that I've just made now. I, I would make that, um, but I make, take the, the sugar out, obviously. Um, and it depends on whether you want to cook it. I don't like it cooked as a separate piece just on a baking sheet because I think it's like just a piece of hard crap. 
um, I always put the, the, the meat and potato hash in a bowl or a big, a big pie dish um, and put the pastry on the top, bake that that way, but, to, but obviously it leaves the sugar out, okay? Is there anything else? Maxine Mo Mosip. Mo yeah. Uh, why don't you cook small pies and sell them? I'm crap, crap at baking. <laughs> well, you wouldn't be crap. This is what this is why we're doing the program, Maxine. Um, I'm not after you know. I run a house which takes a lot of work to run a house to make it look like this permanently. Because this house does look like this permanently. I don't stage this for you all to look in. It does look. My friends will tell you it looks like this 24 hours a day. So I haven't got the time to start baking them and selling them or the inclination. But if you follow what I'm teaching you, this is why we're doing um, really basic uh, recipes. We're not trying to do, you know, if it, if it continues and what is planned for the future, yeah, we will do more highfalutin stuff. But these are really basic things that I think everybody should learn how to do and everybody should be able to do because it's just so easy. Anybody, you've just seen me make that pastry, you can make a pie, darling. And you can make that into little pies, or small pies, great big, but whatever you want. If you're going to, first time, do small like I've just done. Don't try and do, people try to do elaborate huge things. It's the first one, they get in such a mess and it's all over them. So don't, just just stay to a smaller one. Yeah? Anybody else? Not as yet. Not They're just yet. watching and hanging on every word. Hanging on every word I say. Don't forget if you're about Leeds tonight, I'm at the Viaduct Show Bar at 10pm on the stage. Um, in a gorgeous new gown, by the way, that the beautiful, beautiful little Peter's finished yesterday. Absolutely lovely. I'm saying no more, uh, but it's lovely, and I'm thrilled with it. So I should be wearing that. Um, if you're not on the YouTube channel, again, I keep trying to tell you this. Thank you to the people that have joined and subscribed. Um, if you're not on the YouTube channel, go on to my main page and please join it. Yeah. Um, the other videos, what I've sent you before was... This is teaching you how I run my home, not how somebody else does or how it's written in a book. Yes, I do keep to a lot of things that are the etiquette of doing it and I'm a stickler for things being nice. I would never bring the coffee pot from the kitchen into the drawing room, ever. It would just be, it would make me go into hives and be ill. I always bring a silver coffee pot and I have different ones for different rooms. I would never do that. I would never drink out of a mug, ever. Be the last thing on earth you would ever see me do and I certainly wouldn't drink from a paper cup from an overpriced coffee shop in the high street if you paid me to no way would I well probably if you paid me to do it I would I mean it's vile but we're going to teach you loads I've had um, questions this week on people asking me about uh, the linen closet and how I fold the linen I will do a thing and show you how to fold towels the way I do them which I was taught that um, a long time ago and I'll teach you how to do that because I hate towels that are folded wrong uh, people think it's anal, it's not I like everything, I like to be able to open the cupboards and everything is just perfect picture perfect as I call it all the time so we'll do one on that we're going to do um, pies we will move on with the pies as it gets more towards November I am going to do a pumpkin pie with you which we always serve um, on Thanksgiving which is the last Thursday of November. Is it last Thursday or last Friday? Fourth Thursday. It's the fourth. Sorry, it's the fourth one. It's the fourth Thursday of November. <laughs> so the nearest one to that, we will, we'll, we'll, um, we'll do pumpkin pie, which is delicious. If you've never had it and you sit there thinking, oh, I can't imagine a pumpkin pie, trust me, it's, it's a strange texture, but absolutely divine. You'll love it. Um, we're also going to do a lot more videos on the housey things. I'll, I'll teach you the hacks of the cleaning stuff that I use because I don't use, as you know, I refuse to buy all these different sprays for different jobs when one thing does the same job. Yeah, okay. Um, we'll do that. We're going to do Christmas ones as well. Uh, we've been asked to do um, a Christmas garland because I, I always do fabulous garlands that go across the fireplace. We'll do those, um, but they won't be live videos. These will be just pre-recorded because obviously I can't do that in real time in 40 minutes. Um, because Christmas is, believe it or not, we've got Thanksgiving is already planned and Halloween is already planned um, and Christmas, believe it or not, is planned to the letter. I know exactly where every ornament will go in the house and in exactly June. the fireplaces are going to look. I'm really, really in advance. I've even got my dinner, the Christmas dinner's planned and Christmas Eve and the park, everything. What does June want? No, I said it's planned in June. It's planned in June. Oh, I thought you said June's there. <laughs> that was my friend June. Uh, yeah, no, I start. To, I don't. Don't start to plan in June, David. That's really taking it to the excess. 
I sort of start planning. All right, 1st of July. No, I sort of start planning end of September, coming into October. So I know exactly how things are going to be. Planning ahead is utmost, in my opinion. Um, I get loads of messages from people or, or comments saying, well, I have to work all day and I can't do that. Yes, you can. You know, I used to manage to juggle three jobs in a day. And during my lunch break from work, I used to go from the West End of London all the way back to South London to put a casserole in the oven because we didn't have electric machines that did it then and set the timer on the oven and put the casserole in and then another day I'd come home and change all the beds at lunchtime and go back to work. Never sat in coffee shops doing things. I always made sure the house was done first and that was the way I did it. I used to hoover and things before I went to work. I never left it till I came home. I never went out to work at an unmade bed. An unmade bed, in my opinion, after 9am in the morning is, is just the worst thing in the world. It's, it's horrible. And I have to come into the house looking like this. Permanently. Paul, uh, is it Atwell Brace? Yeah, Paul. Have I said that correct? Yes, sort of, yeah. Can you give him and the boys a big shout out, please? Hello, uh, hello to my gorgeous boys. I hope you both watch. He's got those gorgeous, gorgeous boys. I hope you're both watching there. Auntie Terry loves you. Mm -mm. So, is that it? So it's a slightly shorter show today than normal. 45 minutes. 45 minutes. We're supposed to be doing an hour. No questions. See, everybody must be just listening and, and doing as I ask you. So if you've got an idea of, of something, you would, don't start asking me to, you know, we've got a 45 minute, 45 to 50 minute show. You can't start asking me to cook things or do things like a trifle or ridiculous things like that that have to be, you know, refrigerated for an hour in between and things like that. I can't do that. Um, it's like the apple pie, the, the, the apple pie, we've not done apple pie, the blackberry pie. That's going to be in the oven way after this, but I'll photograph it and, and show you it coming out of the oven um, as that's finished. But if there's something you really want to know, keep them basic for you. Don't, um, but I'm thrilled that some of my friends, Jim Nixon, thrilled and, and through with three or four of friends of mine have now invested in tablecloths and um, uh, a toast rack somebody invested in last week. I couldn't think of anything worse than having toast on the table in a toast rack, ever. Um, I don't use tablecloths. I only use those at breakfast time. Um, people ask, you know, did I use tablecloths? No, I don't. I don't like tablecloths anymore. I think it's a bit of a dated thing. But I like them at breakfast time. And I've got loads, you saw them in there. I've got loads of some camp ones, um, usually 30s and 60s and 50s and all that. I like that, I like vintage stuff. And shopping charity shops. You know, my friend Angie Gold, huge international singer, records all over the world, she goes to charity shops for stuff, like I do, like everybody else I know do, because you can't buy half of this stuff anymore. And it's impossible, and all this modern rubbish is absolute rubbish, it really is. Best place to look for uh, food processors when we were talking about the electric grid is eBay. Go onto eBay and look at them on there, because you'll get a real bargain, really well. Just make sure it's got a good speed. Anybody else or not? Well, then we'll sort of wrap it up. I'm glad it's a little bit shorter today um, because, as I said, I've got quite a hectic day ahead. It's always hectic in this house. Uh, I've got to have my hair done and my nails done um, and everything yet to get up to Leeds for tonight. So I hope to see you all there. I hope you have a lovely Sunday. If you bake a pie, post the photograph and make sure you show it me. And I'll see you all soon. Bye.